So this, uh, this is why I'm calling this uh, talk as um, architecture and uh, optical illusion because there were a lot of illusions which have been, you know, uh, tricks have been played over here, which probably the Goans don't uh, realize. But uh, I thought this was probably not the best way, but at least some attempt was made to save the building from looking huge. And uh, it seems to have worked over there. designing a building or a project, uh, I always uh, focus on scale because I feel or I believe that uh, scale is something which a lay person can understand. You know, basically a human brain is tuned to understand the height or width or the depth. So scale becomes a very important part of architecture. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is a project where I had no control on the the width of the building or the height of the building and it was right in the middle of a city and it was also one of my first projects so you know it was just heading towards disaster and uh, the only way to save this project was by creating an optical illusion uh, and that is why I'm calling this uh, talk uh, architecture and optical illusion. Uh, the project is a municipal market in uh, Panjim, Goa. It was uh, initiated uh, by uh, the Chief Minister of Goa, uh, Mr. Parikar, and uh, the project was given to uh, uh, a firm called Prishman Prabhu, who were basically uh, an engineering firm and they were doing a lot of infrastructure projects for the government. So they had a very small team of architects and uh, which they thought was not enough. So they asked me if I could help them with the project. Uh, I had never done a, designed a market before and I had not even been to a market before. But I thought it wasn't a difficult project, so I, of course, agreed. So, uh, the idea was to uh, demolish uh, an existing market and then give them more space and proper space, uh, a proper building. So, the existing market was something like this, which was a ground story structure and, um, uh, you know, it wasn't looking too big. But I had no idea that... Uh, it was just sprawling all over like a slum. And this is the view from the top. So from outside, you can't make out that there were around 1,000 people sitting inside selling all kinds of stuff. I mean, they were sitting in the corridors, the veranda. They had There were some shops also. And it wasn't just vegetables. They were selling everything. So basically, we had to rehouse them. So this is the plot, which the orange one is the existing plot where that whole market was. And uh, the government gave us... Uh, and a, a similar size plot on the left hand side and uh, another some more space on the back and uh, this was a road which was an internal road and there was a uh, sort of a main road on this side and there was this lane which was connecting the two and the bus stand and everything was on this side so people used to walk through this uh, lane but uh, the government said that okay you can take over the entire plot and you know we'll just block this and the idea was to build phase one over here, uh, shift these people over here and then demolish the market and build phase two. And then later on phase three, which never got built. But the phase one and two were basically for the uh, vegetable market and phase three was meant for fish market. So when I started working on it, I thought, uh, you know, we cannot ignore that lane which, we, which the government said we could uh, just take over because uh, it was some sort of a shortcut for people to cross over before they go to the bus stand. So I had made up my mind that I would allow people to walk through the market, you know, and uh, in a way it would have helped because before they go home, I mean, they could buy some vegetables and then catch the bus and go home. So it seemed to work. Uh, so that was my initial idea. And having seen the amount of site area which we had, I mean, the additional area, I thought my initial thoughts were like, this would be a nice ground story structure with you know, a few courtyards and it would be a nice experience to walk in and all that. When we did the vendor count and we realized that there were around 1,200 people inside and uh, we also had to provide most, you know, additional uh, shops and sp uh, uh, platform spaces uh, to add more people and uh, giving them proper aisles and proper platforms and uh, again the 
leaving setbacks, um, loading, unloading, substation, um, rickshaw stand, all those things when they were all added, I realized that not only I need the entire footprint of the building, forget the courtyards, I also had to go one floor higher. Now imagine this is a this is a public building, a vegetable market where there's no escalators. It's you know it's a very uh, a simple building, um, and uh, nobody likes to climb up to the first floor. But we were forced to go one floor higher. So uh, and there was no way we could you know reduce the numbers because everybody had to give give in proper space. Like you know how you have in the slums, whoever has occupied space has to be given space prop a proper space. So. So we had to accommodate everyone, yeah. Keeping the uh, this uh, arrow, which was a shortcut in mind, I thought we'll create a central aisle, which could help people to walk over. And uh, we decided that we should keep the perishable goods, which are like the vegetables and all, uh, you know, on the lower level, which is the ground floor, and the non-perishable, like the plastic or steel and all those stuff, could be on the first floor. And um, we reluctantly, of course, uh, uh, agreed to use the first floor because we had no choice. And then we placed the shops around uh, the boundary with an arcade all around. So the orange squares are the shops, proper shops. And uh, this central space was left open for the platforms. Now, uh, the problem had not ended over here. The existing shops had a mezzanine floor, which had a proper headroom. I mean, I thought were actually three meters and I thought maybe climbing up three meters wasn't so difficult uh, since we were moving some of the shops upstairs. But the existing shops had a mezzanine floor which had proper clear height of another two and a half meters, which means my first floor had gone up by almost two floors. So my fear of climbing one floor was, you know, aggravated and we, we were, so people are supposed to climb two floors now, which is not going to happen. And on top of that, my roof was going to start an, after another three meters, which means from outside, the building was going to look like a three-story building. So, so this was one major problem I thought had to be resolved because how do, how do people climb up to the first floor? So the only way to do it was to, to raise the central aisle. So we, we, gradu we make people climb up gradually um, as they as they enter the market and they climb up by almost two meters and also the floor the first floor was dropped down by another 600 so the gap between the ground and the first floor was reduced by you know on to up to 3.6 meters which was the maximum we could have uh, or the minimum we could have um, and uh, that i thought was okay i mean reasonably good to climb up the first floor so this is one way to uh, resolve. I'll take you back to the plan because uh, it will just show you how it was done. So you can see over here, as you enter, there are steps, few steps going up and so when you are somewhere in between, you are, you know, almost two meters higher from the road level. And from here, you get a nice view of the platforms and you can almost decide where to go. And then you take this flight up to go to the first floor. And also to break the the length of the building, which was like almost 100 meters, um, I tried to make them look like two separate buildings, as you can see over here, so that by by recessing this and um, giving it a different roof altogether, we have skylight over here, which, uh, you know, so it looks like an open street. And these two facades look like two separate buildings. So in a way, we had sort of managed to uh, reduce the length of the building by making them to look like two separate buildings and we also painted them in different colors. So the first problem about climbing up was resolved in a way by raising it, raising the central aisle and this is what the section looks like now um, where you can see the staircases are going up on either side and the first floor was recessed so that you have the entire volume you know, flowing into the second floor. It's, it, the first floor doesn't start over here. It was recessed intentionally. So the, it's a nice big volume inside. And uh, this is the skylight, which allows natural light inside. And we had asked them to keep this vacant so that, you know, it's always people will um, we'll be walking over there, but now they have encroached that space as well. Uh, if you see the real, I mean, if you see the market now, but anyway, uh, 
so th these were the platforms and when you're standing here you can look down on either side and decide where to go uh, we also got some additional space because of the sloping roof which they were had to they wanted to use for uh, their own offices and stores and all that so i thought okay now that one problem of climbing was climbing up was resolved but my next problem was the the scale of the building from outside from the street and what is it going to do to the street and there was no way i could reduce the the height of the building now if you see this um, uh, or when I speak about scale, I mean, uh, the only way we can gauge scale is by comparing something, you know, like our mind basically compares, uh, uh, let's say the door, the height of the door and the, the size of the window with the rest of the structure. And then you decide whether this is a big structure or a small structure, because generally, you know that a door is say seven feet uh, tall or uh, a window is around four feet by four feet. So you think that, okay, this is this is a small structure, you know, because you're sort of comparing uh, an element which you can recognize. Now, my building was looking something like this, where the height had increased and the width has also increased. So, it looked like a big structure. So, the only way to change this uh, was to create an optical illusion, like I said. And I thought that if I increase the size of the openings, it starts looking back like the, the sketch on the left hand side because you are comparing it with the size of the door in the window which you are assuming is you know seven feet or four feet and you then think that okay it's proportionate uh, or it looks like a ground, sto ground story building and this was a trick which we tried to use in the building so if you see this is the elevation of the building a part elevation i mean where i have increased the size of the openings to two meters by two meters those windows are like two meters by two meters and the door on the left is like three meters in height and the arcade is like four meters in height so the i mean this brought back the scale of a ground plus one's building but this wasn't enough because there was a huge gap between this opening and this opening because of the mezzanine floor you know generally you don't have so much of gap in between so there was something uh, to be done something more to be done and if you see if you see in the buildings in goa i mean generally the all the openings have a border around it like a white border which is of a standard width uh, so i thought okay let's make use of that border but we will not keep it constant we'll vary the width of the brand so basically the intention was to reduce the gap between the openings on the lower floor and this floor and this is how it was done. So when you see this, it automatically, you know, it has reduced the gap between the two openings uh, also because the col color change and all that. And then it was time to stop because I thought that, okay, we have achieved maybe visually, but it has still achieved that scale of a building which had to look like a ground plus one if not physically but at least visually and this was repeated all over the facade and uh, so even though the uh, facade has just simple openings which are in a row you know all these openings are in straight line i mean because of the change in the width of the band and whatever the size of the openings it has a nice pattern on it and uh, this is how it looks, the building from outside. It looks like a ground plus one building, but the, like I said, I mean, the roof starts three stories above. And this is the central aisle, the central portion, uh, where you walk in uh, to take the shortcut to go to the other side, to the bus stand. And uh, we also change the color of the building. One is orange and the other one is red. And this is how it looks from outside. I can see the change in the bands. It's it's really uh, you know has uh, made this building look a little more exciting. Now this is a photograph from inside, and it's clicked from the first floor. Now uh, I wasn't really worried about what's happening inside because uh, the space was beautiful. I mean it was just rising, and it was not a it was not affecting the street outside. In a way, it was nice that it, the volume was quite large inside and. Uh, probably the hot air was going up and it wasn't too hot on inside on the lower level. And uh, we have, we stopped the RCC columns up to a certain height and then we took the uh, struts, uh, metal struts to hold the trusses and we've added a few branches so it 
It also looks like a tree, you can see over here. And uh, I thought it was not required to change the width of those bands again and, you know, repeat the same trick inside. I mean, it was, uh, I, I somehow liked the largeness of the space. So we kept it uh, as is. And uh, there was this huge wall, which is like 13 meters by 6 meters, which I had reserved uh, for a mural, which I thought was, uh, would be nice to, you know, to animate the space inside, because this is just a market and uh, maybe with this mural, it would have looked a little different. And, um, and I spoke to uh, the cartoonist Mario Miranda who, um, and asked him if he would be interested in doing a mural year and which of course he agreed and the chief minister also agreed and he thought it was a good idea to involve him. So he uh, saw the space and this is exactly just below the staircase. I mean, when you are climbing up, you look towards this wall. This is what he has drawn over there. And uh, what happened next was quite interesting. Now the space was looking huge initially without the mural. And when this was done, suddenly the space started looking a little more intimate, a little, little you know, uh, smaller. And the reason I realized was because of the figures which he had drawn were also one and a half times bigger than the <laughs> normal human size. And now we were comparing the space with the height of these human beings which he had drawn. So this, uh, after seeing the effect of this mural, I requested him, uh, though it was not in his scope. The, so I asked him whether we can do another small one, which was at eye level, which was on the first floor because we had a lot of space there. Uh, and I explained to him what was happening and what was done outside and he was also quite excited. So he said, yes, let's do another mural. So this is what it looks like uh, when you're climbing up the stairs. And um, then he drew this one. And this was, I mean, he knew that the figures had to be large enough. So this was done at a lower level and uh, when you climb up, so you can actually compare the height of the building with these uh, figures which are at the, the same level where you're standing. And uh, that made a lot of difference. And uh, of course, everybody was so excited that uh, he, he drew another one, <laughs> which was on the other side. So these are all complementary. And uh, so this, uh, this is why I'm calling this uh, talk as um, architecture and uh, optical illusion, because there were a lot of illusions which have been you know, uh, tricks have been played over here, which probably the Goans don't uh, realize. But uh, I thought this was probably not the best way, but at least some attempt was made to save the building from looking huge. And uh, it seems to have worked over there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.